The inhabitants of my imaginary river basin have an idea in their heads of what a man is meant to be like. It's an idea that one can try to chase, but probably never quite attain. For magical reasons, the peasantry of my river basin is 100% female, and the aristocracy is 80% female. Which means that if somebody is male, then he is an aristocrat, and he will get married in his mid to late teens, to women of another aristocratic family. That marriage will not be his individual choice, it will be an agreement between two different families that are looking to create a closer connection for their mutual benefit. When a man gets married, he marries all the women of that family, and he moves to live with them, but not in their house. As part of the wedding, a small house is built close to the house of his wives, using materials that have been transported there by his family, and it's really just one big bedroom, which only gets used as a bedroom. But even though the house is small and its use is limited, it symbolically conveys the fact that when a man gets married, he does get married to women of another family, but he does not get married into their family. He always remains a member of his original household, and the small piece of land that his little house stands on becomes part of his family's land. You can think of it as a little embassy, with the man as an ambassador sent from one aristocratic family to another. So, in addition to being a husband to his wives, his job is also to advocate for his family's interests, which is where the ideal comes in, and it's all about balance. Men get married pretty young, and as they get older, they are expected to become men who can, on an inter-family level, balance the interests of both families, advocating for their family, but also keeping in mind the interests of the family of the women they married. And this includes understanding what will benefit who, and knowing what's been happening in the kingdom lately. And on an interpersonal level, the ideal man can balance the amount of attention he gives to all his wives, without ignoring anyone and without playing favorites, and if he has a co-husband or two, without hogging anyone to himself. And the general idea of balance connects to the idea of moderation and tranquility, so the ideal man is calm, reserved, doesn't overindulge in anything, and is always willing to compromise. Which gets us back to the ideal man as the perfect diplomat. And because men always remain members of their birth family, regardless of the fact that they move away from them, they have just as much right to their family estate as their female relatives do, because that is something that a family owns collectively. An aristocratic family is a unit, and all its property belongs to that family as a unit, so the idea of inheritance doesn't really exist, Generations pass as years go by, but the family carries on existing for a time and holding the right to its estate. Unless everybody dies, or the family loses its aristocratic status, and with it, all its rights as well. And at least one way in which that could happen will be the topic of the next episode.